welcome back to Manum Across New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling, as you can see what's going on on our lo lovely island of Vaughan Hollow today, where the, the, the burning question you might be asking, um, well, well, I mean, the first thing you might be asking is, like, why are you recording so late? Yeah, you know, just how it is sometimes. Um, it's <laughs> nearly 11, I didn't realise quite how late it was, but, oh, hold on, is my, my Steam Deck, are you working? Perfect. But the burning question probably on your mind is, did you set up your display tablet? And yes, I have, it's over here right next to me literally about a few centimeters to my right i can't really um show you it i suppose but um because i haven't set up like a recording for it or anything but it's over here it's it's cool it's probably worth <laughs> what we'll get into it in a bit good evening everyone right now in four now it's 10 42 p.m on thursday october 13 2022 uh so we have a visitor staying at the campsite i'm going to predict it's sprinkles um yeah, I have it set up over here. It's, uh, if you're wondering what it is, it's a Hoyon Canvas 24. Uh, not the Pro version, not the Plus version, just the, the regular version, because that was the one that was on sale in the Hoyon site. And it is cool, to be perfectly honest. It's absolutely massive, is certainly what I say. I mean, like I expected it to be big. I knew it was bigger than my computer monitor, but it's huge. It's it's crazy big. And it um, currently is taking up a lot of real estate on my desk, um, which is fine because my desk is actually quite big anyway. You know, I've, I've had to shift a thing, things along, had to like rearrange my monitors, not rearrange, but that's a bit extreme, but like I've had to basically shift all my monitors and stuff along just to make room for it. And um, luckily I had a basically a big empty space to my right, which, you know, the, uh, the tablet quite fits quite perfectly in. Um, I'm still kind of figuring out what sort of height and angle uh, I like drawing at it best. I'm, I, Cause I don't know, cause it's meant to be like, quite a high angle, oh it's Gale, hello, um, oh, quite a high angle, it's meant to be good like ergonomically or something, but it also sort of depends, because I feel like I'm like sort of towering above it, because maybe my chair's a bit too high up, but it's also like ergonomically, you're meant to have your chair like high up enough that if your elbows were like at right angles, if your arms were at right angles at your side, um, they would basically be flush with the top of your desk or something like that, so I don't know how you're meant to do that, I mean also balance everything else, but um, I assume the answer is I'm meant to have my laptop, uh, not laptop, sorry, my computer screen's up higher, to, to make sure that I am um, everything's in its proper place but you know ergonomically it's close enough is probably what I'd say um, and yeah it's cool um, I don't know I mean certainly it, it does certainly make me want to have a bigger space to work with because currently you know of it I, I do have a rather big table it's one it's not even a table a, a, sorry table a desk which is just in front of me and it's big it's one which actually curves very very slightly i would describe it as the l block from tetris but um the, the inside rim is curved rather than or bit curved not like extraordinarily it's a bit curved rather than um square which is nice because now you know, i have like i've got you know a lot of space taken up by like all my computing stuff like i got the microphone followed by the computer monitor one followed by my um Oh, I didn't mean to do this. Followed by my audio thing, followed by my other computer monitor, now followed by my display uh, tablet, followed by my computer behind all of that. You might be like, why don't you put your computer on the floor? Well, my computer is um, the case specifically has an uptake or the intake of air on the bottom of the case. So I can't put it on the floor because I've got carpeted floors and that would probably stop the airflow. But yeah, um, I haven't used my disabled display tablet a whole lot. I'm waiting, not I'm waiting for the weekend. It's just like, I haven't had super amounts of time. Uh, I did a little doodle yesterday um, of like a cat, like just like chilling in a window, um, just to sort of, you know, like warm up, just get used to it. And it's pretty cool. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it's immediately, I'm just like, yep, having a display tablet, super, super cool. Um, like on the whole, I'm like, this is awesome. Um, and on the not whole, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> okay, basically in every single sense, not every single sense, like 95% of things, I'm just like, this is awesome, you know, get to see exactly what I'm doing. It's huge, you know, being able to directly click on things and not have to have like a weird disconnect between hand motion and screen, not having to rotate things, being able to see everything at once, everything being like much, not lifelike size, but you know, just having everything so massively in your face is fantastic. <clears throat> the 5% of downside, one, Obviously, it's absolutely massive, so you really need a lot of space to properly work with it. Um, it's certainly, oh, I'm not, apparently, apparently I'm not in front of you, Katrina, but it's certainly the sort of thing where, like, I wish I had a bigger desk, or at least um, I had, like, the, the monitor stands, you know, to, like, free up some room on my desk or that sort of thing, or had, like, I had, like, the thing which I, I can attach to the back of a display tablet, which is basically a giant boom arm. Um, something like that to be able to sort of like position the tablet exactly where I want comfortably um 
I think that would be super cool, but you know, I don't have that, so you know, you gotta make do. And the, the one other downside is the fact that technically, that because your hand is not see-through, um, you can't see through your hand, is basically, I, I, I guess, what I was going on about. Um, like, I, d I don't even know where I was going. <laughs> like, sometimes when you're drawing, I'm just, you're just like, oh, you're trying to draw something, but your hand is in the way, so you can't can't quite exactly see what's going on. So you're just like, ah, you know, a little bit inconvenient to sometimes be drawing and be like, oh, your hand's kind of blocking the rest of it. But that's really, really such a minor thing compared to the rest of it. If anything, the biggest thing is having, just needing a, a large enough desk space for it in the first place, you know? I always feel like I don't have enough desk space, I and mean, then I still add more things to it, and I'm like, I still don't have enough desk space. But, you know, maybe it's just it's sort of like a mental game. Maybe I just want, like, an infinite desk space, despite the fact I don't need infinite desk space. Um, but it reminds me of, like, um, a Stephen King. I think a Stephen King quote or something which i only know about because of the comic illustration by zen pencils where um it's basically sort of the idea of being like oh you know my entire life i was sort of like chasing after the idea that i wanted this massive desk or whatever like a think about it, a huge desk full of where i could work and have like great inspiration or whatever for you know the, the stuff i want to do um and then you know having a desk which like takes up the, the like the, the entirety of his study and it like goes all the way around him and then you know his realization that it's like that's not exactly what he wants you know because you know, he ended up getting frustrated that sort of thing now he has a desk which is like tidy and at the side of a room because you know the work your work should not define your life uh well i, I suppose it, that's kind of like depending on what your work is but um you should have a healthy relationship with your work rather than having one which is just being con one with uh, your life being absolutely consumed by um it in the first place like the desk consuming the entire room um i don't actually know if that's a true story or even a true quote hit by him in the first place it seems quite sort of surprisingly metaphorical um which i guess you'd expect from like a literature writer or anything like that but like surprisingly metaphorical in the sense where i'm just like that seems like almost too well planned and <laughs> planned out planned out in the first place where i'm just like hmm not that I'm that suspicious, but I'm just like, I can't believe that's the case. Um, but yeah, um, I forgot what I was going to say about this. So yeah, I just, I just kind of need more desk space. I always found it as well, like, it's one of, I don't know what that was, I guess something, there was a bug there. Uh, one of the things which kind of stops me from, not stops me, that's like right, not the right word, but um, a deterrent, I suppose, for me. Um using my Copic markers which my friends got for me ages ago is the fact that the only paper I had to draw on it is like um you because you need special paper for it otherwise it ends up bleeding through like massively and starts saying you start drawing like with ink on your desk um but it's like a special sort of card or whatever like it's very thick card or some special type of card I can't remember and they, they gave me some but it's A3 which is you know it's not bad in, in its own sense um it's just like when I ever I try and draw my desk, I'm like, I have no room on my desk to actually like work with this. And then you might be like, hey, you know, sorry, not A3, I think it's A2. Um, you cut it in half so you have something like smaller to work with. But I don't know, something, something about my brain. I'm just like, I can't do that. Just what if I still need to um, like use it? What if I what, what if I want to draw something so massively big? Obviously, now I'm saying it out loud. That's absolutely nonsensical. That's never going to happen. I should probably just cut it in half so I can have like an A4 side piece of paper and with that it's a lot easier to work with but still i don't know i just never got around to it but certainly i think having a big desk matters more especially when you're a student or when you're studying or if you're in any sort of industry which requires studying that sort of thing although i, I would say at that at that point you should probably have if, if you spend a lot of time at a desk where you don't need a computer but you also have a computer you should probably have a separate desk right you should have like a separate computer desk and a separate like studying desk if anything, you should get one of those cool studying desks. Like, I hate to, you know, out my weebiness here, but, um, like, the ones you see in anime, <laughs> where it's just, like, a, they've got, like, the sort of partitions, a backboard, which is, like, a cork board, and they've got, like, little shelves on the side for you to, like, put your pencil cases and pencils and stuff, and, like, little, like, paper organisers and that sort of thing. You know, I want one of those desks. Well, I, I don't mean it anymore, but when I was younger, I'd be like, man, I'd love one of those desks. You know, and have that along with combinationally along with my uh, computer desk. I mean, it'd be just be like, oh, you know, you can like work on it, and you know, work on the, the study desk, do whatever you want, and then you know, like swivel over to um, your computer desk whenever you feel like it. Well, as long as you're done with studying. Um, 
or Daniel Webster today. And technically, actually, in university, I did have that, like, in uh, one of my... Um, no, in, in my room in first year. I don't don't think so. I ha did I have it in my second year? I don't know. If it, I think it was just my first year. I had two desks, and one I used for recreation and playing, and one I used for just basically, like, studying. Except for I did a stupid mistake. I, put, I, I basically put them right next to each other to have a massive L-shaped desk, because that's what I thought I wanted. When really I should have separated them out. Had one desk for studying and one for playing, like, put them in separate areas. So, you know, I, I wasn't tempted to be like, oh, you know, I'll just play a little bit while I was studying and that sort of thing. You know, it, it's, a, it's an important thing to be able to have a sort of separation from work and play, I think. Um... Yeah, having like separate areas for both and probably makes sense. So, you know, you go in one area, you, you're you prepped in mindset of work, one area and prepped in mindset of play, which is certainly, I think, um, I mean, I think a lot of people probably discovered that, um, especially during a lockdown when you had to work from, when lots of people had to work from home, just discovering the fact that, you know, working from home, it's not exactly difficult per se, but, you know, the, the temptation is strong because it sort of blurs the line between your work and recreational life. So it's, it's why, like, studies, I suppose, are so popular, like as a separate room. You know, your what rooms in general are very popular. Like, have a not have a bare minimum, but if you have the luxury of being able to have separate rooms, you should have you certainly like a bedroom. I, I'm trying to remember because it, it was like covered by a CGP Great video, which was a really good one. It was like with, with, with a space shop, like something spaceship U or something. It was released at right at the start of lockdown, so I don't know. Go go give it a watch if you're curious about exactly what I was talking about. But I'm trying to remember what he said in his thing. I think it was like exercise area recreational area work area sleeping area you, you need a basic four things which makes sense you know you need a bedroom a dining room slash kitchen um no wait what <laughs> sorry you need a bedroom and outside a recreation room of some sort a relaxation room which you know could also be the kitchen dining room and then you need a work room like a study um, and I think that makes sense. Like even if you, if it's not like separate rooms. Even if it's just different parts of your room, and you're in bedroom. Like if you live in a one place, like sort of bed set or something, um, you can still kind of do it. You know, have desk. That's your workstation. Bed. That's your sleeping area. Or I suppose you'd need a build built-in kitchen for it to be like your recreational room, and then like a mini, maybe a mini dining table or something. And then you know, exercise and be outside. I guess that's just the outside or just like whatever big open space you have. Obviously, so your your mileage sort of varies depending on what you've got going on, but um, yeah, it, it's a thing which you know certainly I I would like a study you know separate room to just like go in and be like um, you know here here's why I go to work and I think having that separation is quite nice you know certainly like at, at least in my experience being able to have a separate area to do work or to study or that sort of thing is far more beneficial you know your product productivity is far more effective. And just like being able, just that separation. And the important thing I think to take away from that is also that like even if you're working and you are going, you are procrastinating. It's important that you don't procrastinate at the work desk. You know, just you know, take your time out. Be like, okay, I'm bored. I'm procrastinating. Even though I should be working right now, I'm going to procrastinate for half an hour. Go to your recreational area, procrastinate, then come back because it's very important to have that sort of separation. It's no good like pulling out your phone at the work desk and like procrastinating there, like physically you're meant to get up go sit down at the place where you've designated that you're going to partake in recreation and partake in it <clears throat> excuse me um and i found that very interesting i guess it's just like the human brain is very sort of con conditioned i suppose in a sense to have separate like designated areas where you know you have to do one thing in one area and if you start blowing those boundaries then it becomes um quite difficult to separate them and your brain sort of like instinctively goes like oh you know i'm I'm in the work area, I should work, as opposed to a, like a blurred boundary where you're like, I'm in the work area where I should work, but also I should procrastinate, <laughs> you know? It's just a bit, I don't want to say it's weird. Isn't it just interesting is probably how I put it? Interesting. And the infamous words of um, two-step violin. It's like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, the long and short of it is I need a bigger desk. And perhaps the answer actually is I need a second desk, one to put like, other stuff on like I and mean, then one to be like a recreational desk I don't know most of the stuff on this desk is recreational stuff I'm gonna be honest so there's not really much much else I can do about that or maybe I should just get one of the, the giant monitor boom, boom arms to actually um, probably you know live a live a life of luxury of being able to have a, a swivelly arm of and being able to put it exactly where I want to um, 
but yeah, that, that's not the, the, li the life I'm living right now. That's just, you know, existence as it could be, but not existence as it is. I felt, you know, like, quite bleak, which is not really how I meant it, but, you know, so be it. Um, yeah, Death Space. I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to sort of think back to my secondary school days, like Death Space as well, because I, I had a tiny desk when I was, um, much younger. Uh, I remember it was like a blue desk. Uh, it's actually a little bit better in a sense because it had like a pull-out tray for where I put my keyboard and my mouse. Um, so that cleared up a lot of desk space so I could actually do work on it. But I remember that desk was tiny. Like the, the biggest problem was always when I whenever I had to write like essays in like history on ink. No, history especially because you work with a textbook to like sort of like fact check things or what whatnot. And the history textbooks we had were like A4 text. Um, it's not sorry, not textbooks. The, the workbooks we had for all um, our writing books were like A4 writing books. And then um, you would have these these giant textbooks as well, where you had to sort of like cross-reference things. Like I guess it goes for like any um, sort of subject where you need to cross-reference things, and it's just like, oh man, this, this cross-referencing is quite a nightmare when you don't have like enough desk space. English literature was another big one, where like you had to have a book open outside, and then you have like a had to have like worksheets open, where it's just, you know you got like lists of quotes or other things or like other things, um, other important themes and stuff you need to like study, etc., etc. Um, you know, having a big desk, open desk, open mind. That's what I say. So do I agree with Stephen King? Do I disagree with him? I don't really know, to be perfectly honest. I don't know. <laughs> um, I suppose certainly your, it, it depends on your perspective as, you know, a person and how you interact with the world. Well, okay, maybe that's a bit of a grandiose way of saying it, but you know what I mean. Like, it sort of just depends who you are and how, how you think. If I, if I want to put it in the most, like, sort of a dramatic way possible. There's something else I was going to say about this, but I don't remember what it was off the top of my head. Also, I don't know what my missions we even got to in the first place, but um, do we need to... Oh, we could do the exercise one. We haven't done the exercise one in ages, to be perfectly honest. Especially since it's quite difficult to do any of the others. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I probably should have looked properly around to see if Gay... Uh, not Gay, also. Uh, Wisp or Celeste were around today, but... Uh, I don't mean to talk to you, Labelle. Uh, a fairy tale. Sorry, Label. I'm just going to promptly never do that. Oh, we should talk to Label more often to actually get um, one of the pieces of clothing. School uniform or ribbon? I'm going to be honest, that doesn't seem very fairy tale esque but, you know, so be it if, if you say so. Um, what was I going to say about, you know, like, death space and that sort of thing? Um, I, I legitimately can't remember. I think I, I think I had like a point which I wanted to sort of like continue on with, but wait a minute. Nick's wearing a different outfit. Is that like his winter outfit, or is is that his exercise outfit in the winter? I didn't realize he he even had ex. Wait, I don't even remember Nook exercising with us most of the time. Isn't it mostly Isabel? Oh, is it in the morning? It's Isabel. When even in the evening, it's Nook. I think I'm just remembering wrong. I think Nick probably does exercise with us and I just forgot. Um, what was I going to say? Because I remember I had a point and I was like, oh yeah, this would be a great conversation part. But now I can't even remember it anymore. So it's like, well, I guess it's starting a conversation in its own life, but, you know, it's a bit moot. Well, moot's not really the right word, but you know what I mean? It's a bit like, um, not what I was going for. <laughs> what was it? Some part of death space. Exercise books. Oh, I, I remember now, but I don't even know why I wanted to bring this up or anything. But you know, it's, it's more like a conversation for a, a different video about like what what colours do you end up associating with like different subjects and that sort of thing. Because I was thinking about the fact that like in at least in secondary school we we had like very sort of set book colour combinations. Like e each subject had. Um, that because whenever you fill up an exercise book you just ask your teacher you know, can I have another one and then they'll give you another one and you can do whatever you want well not do whatever you want but you start filling up that one as well and remember every subject got like forced into one um color of their exercise book like history was red geography was like a a, a midish darkish green and biology was light green what else english lich english was dark uh, dark blue um I'm trying to think because we did English literature and English language, but I don't think we had separate books for them. Why do I feel like we, we, we went 
forwards were English literature for a book and backwards were English language. I don't know if I just made it up, but maybe we did have separate books. Um, I'm trying to remember what the other colours were. I think French was orange or something. Or like maybe languages in general were orange. Physics, I think, was pink. That sounds right. And maths, it's weird because maths, I swear, it used to be yellow. But I can't remember if that was only in primary school. But in secondary school, at least in later years, certainly it was dark blue. But they had, it was a small square ones. But I still associate maths with yellow in the first place. So, not in the first place, but still, so I, I don't really know. Anyway, that's a conversation topic for another time. For now, we're going to round off this episode here. What am I going to title this video? Desk space, I guess. So, if you have been watching, thank you very much. It's been Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've been Dear Darling. Any likes, comments, subscriptions, shares are greatly appreciated. Join the Dear Darling Discord. Follow me on Twitter down below. Hope to see you again. But for now, it's our farewell. So, until next time, bye bye for now.